a hybrid coax light sort of system. So for backwards compatibility's sake, I mean, we're not mm-hmm. we're not that far off from uh from you know our mice having fiber optic cable. I mean, think of how cool that's going to be too. By the way, Nash, because imagine imagine these gamers, especially these pro gamers, or even these you know uh, modern warfare or even you know MMO players. Imagine getting like a getting like the MMO mouse, but it's got a fiber optic cable instead of a USB cable, and it's you know it could do its light show thing while it's uh while it's sending data. I mean, that's 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 the next marketing gimmick, you know. That's that's like that's like negative latency at that point. The, the mouse moves before you want it to. Holy shit! It's a psychic <laughs> mouse. Yeah, seriously. It's it, you know it's it's really weird thinking about this, but we're gonna come to a day when we're not gonna be able to use the older equipment because nobody makes copper anymore. But that is not this day. No, it's not yet. I I don't think that's for at least another ten, fifteen, twenty years. You know. Anyway. Yeah, dude, just get an RCA cable. It's literally called an RCA cable. I don't know, like, uh, or phono, I guess, is another way to put it. That's the old way to yeah. put it. Uh, but RCA cable, I think, is the uh, the answer you're looking for. Uh, unfortunately, you're, you think there's multiple RCA cables. There's not. It's just the RCA. Basically, what you... S- Actually, I know what you're getting at. When you search for an RCA cable, you find them in triplets. You find the red, white, and yellow ones. Um, and, they, and they come in, like, a triplet package. That's just red and white for audio and yellow for video. And it's basically the yeah. RCA style cable. Is they're talking about the connector, and don't worry about it. You can plug the yellow one in the red one, the red one in the white. It don't make no difference. Wires, wires, wire. You have to connect the yellow hole to the yellow hole. Yep. Robert. Yep. Wire is a wire is a wire unless it starts having logic circuits in it. At which point, it's not interchangeable. All right. Three Marlets writes in for us. Uh, I've had some problems with missing data on my external hard drive. Last Christmas, I received a 2 terabyte Seagate and external drive. I wanted a regular internal drive, but my parents didn't realize the difference. Anyway, I put my Steam files on the external drive as I was running out of room on my regular hard drive for all the games I had. I didn't experience any problems having all my games on the external drive. Even the multiplayer games ran fine. That is, until about a little over a month ago. While Steam was updating, something seemed to go wrong and the update froze. I eventually had to restart the computer in order to stop the malfunctioning update. When I went back to check the Steam files, all the game content was gone. Not the actual Steam files, but the individual game files. I checked the recycling bin and couldn't find them, double-checked the settings to make sure Windows wasn't hiding any files, ran a virus scan, and finally, after being suggested to do so by a friend, downloaded the tune-up utility, which I could find nothing. No viruses, no files, no nothing. They just vanished. So... That's, uh, that's, um, That's something broke there. That's in your file table. So I had to re-download all of my Steam games, uh, and I lost my place in the paragraph. There we go. Please use spaces, folks. It helps to keep track of what you're writing. Uh, So I had to re-download all my Steam games. Luckily, most of the save games were stored in a different location, so I lucked out there. At first, I I assumed this must have been a problem with Steam until about a week ago, when all of a sudden the video files on my external drive disappeared this time without a malfunctioning update. I could not find them in the recycling bin, move to another location, or even a record of their deletion. It's been over a month since these two incidents, and thus far nothing else has gone missing. If you know what possibly could have happened, I would love to know so that I could avoid having this happen again in the future. Thanks again for your help, and have a happy new year. You shut off your computer during an update. But the video mm-hmm. files went missing without an update. Yeah, but yes. he'd already done the damage. Mm, yeah, that probably is Steam update? Yeah, first, don't... Uh... Unmount your external drives. There's like remove hardware button. Do that. Yes. Every time. <clears throat> also, if you got an external drive, you can make an internal one out of it. Just have to kind of break it open and connect it internally. I Means some drives are kind of resisting breaking open, but <coughs> you, you can get it the hard drive inside. But in because it's instance... just an internal hard drive, put in an external case. You know how Windows, when, you, when you're running an update, tells you, do not shut off your computer until this update's complete? It's not kidding. Mm-mm. And what happened here, I'm willing to bet, he has scrambled that drive and probably needs to either reformat it, and probably a yep. low-level format, to get it unfucked. Because what's happening, when you rebooted it in the middle of the... Um... Okay, when you erase a file on your hard drive... 
Yeah, you're yeah. not actually erasing it. It's not like an eraser goes over it and makes the data go away. What you're doing is the software looks at that drive, it goes to the, to the boot record, and all the areas where those files are supposed to be, it just says, okay, we can write over this now. This is empty. And, then, and in fact, the, uh, hard, hard drive forensics, computer forensics, takes advantage of that uh, by just reading the individual yep. bits off the drive. Right. Those, <clears throat> that, those files are still there. It's just the computer says, this space is, we can use this space and nothing's going to get fucked <coughs> up because they don't want to keep this stuff anymore. Also, you could maybe get them back on, if you have Windows 7 and NTFS, use uh, go to the properties of the folder and it says previous version. There's previous version somewhere in there. It's a tool called Volume Shadow Copy from Windows, which keeps backups of everything it has space for, essentially. Every time you change it, it doesn't override it, it just writes it somewhere different and keeps the old reference alive. <laughs> All in all, though, in this case, I think when, my best guess is when you reboot, and because it's an external drive that makes it so much worse for all this, uh, when you rebooted in the middle of the update, you hosed it. Now, I don't think you hosed it physically, which is the good news, but I think you hosed the uh, boot record and the, the idea, it doesn't quite know where things are supposed to be erased and not anymore, and it's confused. And it's sad, and you're probably just going to have to do a low-level format on it. You back up, back it up, format the drive, and then put things back on there. And I think you should be okay from there. By the way, I just um, wanted to mention, I, I agree with you guys, but I, I just kind of wanted to mention, if you actually do want to delete data off a drive, do you remember back in the day the Gutman method? Mm-mm. The Gutman method was the 35 uh, write pattern uh, to the older drives, so uh, so forensics couldn't retrieve the data that was uh, that was on there. Uh, they they couldn't even best guess the data that was on there; it would all seem a ra like a random wipe. Ooh. Uh, now that is the old Gutman method, which was um, <clears throat> which was, was for the old uh, the older RLL encoded disk, which uh, you know that was that was that was pre that was pre hundred gigabyte disks. Um. Modern drives, though, uh, don't use those older encoding techniques, and uh, <laughs> the patterns specified by Gutman are now superfluous. So you don't need a 35, uh, 35 write wipe to uh, to really, really securely wipe a, a drive. Um, but if you really are paranoid, I mean, that's that's probably one of the best ways to do it. Uh, but right now, honestly, uh, here's what's really interesting. Nowadays, that data is condensed so much on these on these platter discs that wiping data from them is probably and and not having it be recoverable by by professional uh, computer forensics is almost as simple as just writing zeros on uh, on every bit. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I I think you know. Um, could see that the other way around also. Like your hard drives are so crappy you couldn't even get back the data you overwrote. Yeah, you can't even get that. You can't even forensically retrieve data anymore. Uh, well, whatever. Back in my day, we need to. We had to override 35 times. <laughs> we had to override it 35 times, and a 150 megabyte hard drive took three days. Damn it. Alrighty, uh, we've got another question, and uh, I guess more answers. Um, let's go to da let's go to Davkus's question. I'm happy to report that I was able to fix my Dazzle DVC 160. If you guys remember, we talked about this a while ago. Mm -hmm. Turned out Skype had been hogging all the video input resources. No. So I had to. Happened? You don't know, Skype fuck something up. You don't say. <laughs> Uninstalling Skype fixed that right up, along with fixing a few other things as well. Dot dot dot. Hmm. <laughs> You mean to tell me Skype might not be the best piece of software on the planet? Mm. Guy's a piece of shit. Do you see Guy why? New flesh. Do, do you see why I'm really trying to push to move this to uh, to Mumble? <laughs> oh man, uh, the problem I'm having now is with adding a new hard drive to the PC. We recently bought a Seagate Barracuda Green 1.5 terabyte hard drive. I installed the drive and formatted to use with Windows 7 32-bit. Then when I started to move some files onto the drive, the move failed, and Windows no longer recognized the hard drive. Uh, I lost the data that had already been moved to the drive. I, I tried to format it again, and it failed during the format. 
The PC itself would also make the occasional beep. That didn't happen before the drive was installed. This leads me to believe that the power supply may not be putting out enough power to handle an additional hard drive. I already made the hard disk back to Newegg and got a replacement of the same model. I took to set up this hard drive, and the, this time it didn't even make it through the first formatting before failing. It, too, caused the machine to beep occasionally. Is this due to a lack of wattage from the power supply, a possible configuration issue, bad luck with hard drives, or something else altogether? Father Borg, yeah, here's the reason for beeps. They mean something. Yeah. Kind of have to, if you can, record it for us. Or at least write down if it's like too long, too short, or Beethoven. Yeah. Well, if it's, Be if it's Beethoven, it has nothing to do with the hard drive. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, uh, we, we need to know what future. the beeps are. Uh, it sounds like something. It's not the hard drive that's your problem. Mm. It sounds like it's the motherboard. Yeah, it sounds like there, there might actually be a short in the motherboard. Yeah. And, when, and then the port you're hooking it up to is, is, is triggering that short. It's, it, that sounds like the problem to me, at least. I, I don't know. I could be mistaken. I could be insane. I could be absolutely out of my fucking mind. Depends on the motherboard, actually, what the beep code means. Yeah, but it yeah. does. Beeping normally means motherboard. Yep. Normally, yeah. Normally it means motherboard. Or it could also mean you've gotten a very rare uh, re uh, re uh, resident memory um, infection, and uh, it's, it's fucking with you. I, somehow... <laughs> Somehow I don't see that as uh, uh I, yeah. I don't see that as as happening. But you know, hey, what are you gonna do? Um, uh, yeah, it, it sounds like there's there's probably a short in the motherboard somewhere. Well, we're oh when it, it's it's now expanded to ten pages, not nine. So we're not on the last page yet. How many questions do we have on the tenth page? Oh, look at that. We still got more questions there. Sweet, four questions no. on the. That's great. That means we have at least another hour of this left. By the way, um, is uh, is Doctor Who on tonight? I think there is one, right? Yep. Brand new one. Oh, and I'm going to miss it? Oh, crap. I don't mind. I'll see it later. Mm. Miss Dude, it. I'm not exactly clamping at, champing at the bit for this one, okay? Okay. The, the trailer left me a bit nonplussed, but I'll watch it when I watch it. Want to see the new TARDIS? Yeah, I do want to see the new TARDIS. It looks good. Uh, what time is it on? I don't know. At least here, I don't know. Probably, I think, 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay, 9 p.m. Eastern. All right, we got time. One more question. How's it going, guys? I've got two issues uh, that me and my friend need some help with. Lately, my friend's computer has been acting strange when she's browsing the web. She'll search for something on Google, click the link. I'll, it'll go to a website for a moment, then suddenly pass through to another site she's never heard of. I tried to help her and found that being a former Mac user, she was running her Windows 7 machine without any protection. So I had her install a vast malware by SpyBot. She scanned her system a few times now, and it keeps coming back clean. I also had her try Chrome instead of Firefox, and it still happens. I also thought it could be a DNS issue, but her work uses the same ISP DNS, and it doesn't happen there. So I'm not sure what to try next. Uh, host file? Yep. Might be infected. Uh, proxy settings? Yeah, maybe the host host file or maybe proxy settings as well. Um, uh, maybe some maybe some of these cleaner softwares aren't checking. Yeah, the browser specific proxy settings, like Firefox has some itself, and the global proxy setting, which are set by Internet Explorer. Hmm. Those might be it. It could be it, that too. There's a, there's a, there are a lot of settings that these things won't check or won't fix. Uh, proxy settings are one of them. Host files are another one. Um, it, it sounds, it, it, it's going through a site she's never heard of. Oh, she's passed through to another site she's never heard of. It could also be D now it, it, it says, um, that was her computer, but it doesn't happen at work. Is this a laptop she brings, she can bring into work and try on the work, on the, on the, uh, business network or, or, or not? Um, if it's just a computer at home, then it doesn't sound like the ISP was <laughs> hijacked. It may be... I'm just wondering, maybe her maybe her router was hijacked. Um, yes. You know, I was thinking maybe her router may be hijacked, and she didn't. Because I've seen this happen where there's <laughs> there there are people who actually drive around to open Wi-Fi networks or to or to web protected Wi-Fi networks, crack them, and they 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 deliberately try to set their DNS to to a local. I've seen people do this. It's it's ridiculous. They try to make money off of them by doing this. It's ugh, it's weird. Um, I personally, I just go to open Wi-Fi networks to use them. I don't, like, you know, fuck around with them too much, too much. Although I do tend to secure them, um, much, <laughs> much, much to the owner's chagrin. I'm, I'm sure. 
<laughs> but I would recommend... lock this fucker down, I am. <laughs> yeah, and then they can't connect to it afterwards. Whoops, my bad. Yeah, but it's safe now. It's safe. Well, <laughs> it's safer now. Uh, since they're too stupid to lock it down, I've, I've protected the internet from them. <laughs> uh, I'm an asshole. Um, yeah, so uh, proxy settings, the hosts file... Uh, and check your router settings too, and any any internet connection settings, because it may not have cleared out something, especially like proxies and things like that. It may not have cleared that out. Um, it, it it may have gotten rid of the infection, the initial infection, or the initial infection might not be there. But just just double and triple check that, and then get back to us, especially the router, especially the router and the router's DNS settings. Um, two, I recently installed Ubuntu on a secondary hard drive, so I could dual boot between it and Windows Seven, and have been enjoying it. I then did the upgrade from 11.04 to 11.10, and it's been nothing but problems. <laughs> Performance is much worse, and I get frequent system errors. I'm hoping there's a way to downgrade back to 11.04. I'm willing to do a reinstall of 04 if there's a way to preserve the home partition so I don't need to reinstall my applications, but I'm not sure how to do that. Um, well, uh, to be honest with you, you'd probably be better off just wiping it and installing it again. I know you're going to lose your applications, but... I'd rather nuke the home partition than I would uh, than I would keep those uh, applications, especially if some of them have been upgraded for uh, eleven ten and uh, uh, may not be backwards compatible with eleven four. Yeah, um, because eleven ten is using a newer kernel too. Aren't uh, they? So. Are, aren't they up to twelve now? Could you just try so. to uh, change the what's what is it Ubuntu? Yeah, Ubuntu. Okay, to <clears> change the sources. In slash etc app sources dot yeah. list, change it back to the <coughs> whatever it was at eleven point oh four sources and yeah you could uh, yeah. you could do and then run app get dist upgrade. You could do run or app get dist you upgrade. Try it at least before you wipe it. Or Maybe attempt, it works. Or you could upgrade to twelve. See if that makes any difference. Let's see if twelve makes any difference. I haven't heard of eleven ten of uh, the upgrade from four to ten making any uh, huge difference on the eleven branch. Um, I've never really actually heard about nothing but huge problems, performance problems, things like that. So it it could be that the uh, the ten upgrade. Actually, um, you know, do you have Nvidia or 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 a AMD? Because I know sometimes when Ubuntu does these jumps, they'll disable, especially uh, when you when you do a jump from four to ten, a minor version jump like that. Um, oh, yeah, they they, they will disable the non-free and uh, the non-free repository, which means you won't get your binary drivers for Nvidia or AMD. Oh. And that means performance is going to suck. So you may want to you may want to try. Um, you, Those uh, AMD free drivers are bad. Oh no, they're, they're terrible. They're absolutely awful. Um, oh, that's right. Eleven ten was Unity, wasn't it? Unity was a piece of shit. That's yes. right. That's right. Yeah. So you may want to stick with eleven four, or um, you may want to try. In fact, you know, since you're you're just playing around with it, I know you don't want to lose your applications, but why not try a different? You know, uh, why not try a different Linux system? Um, why not roll your own Linux? I mean, why not try that? Or well, heck, it might just be as simple as a different shell. Uh, if you're getting if you're getting kernel panics, I don't think it's GNOME or KDE or Unity. It, 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 I, I, I think oh, it's, X can break stuff. Well, uh, well, it could definitely be X. I mean, that's that's the big thing. I mean, I know that, <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's the actual window manager. I don't know. I it it could be a lot of problems. Depends on what the actual kernel panics are. Um, but I, I would I would suspect that the upgrade disabled your non-free repositories, uh, and <coughs> oh excuse me, and really fucked up your your drivers. So why don't you? There was a question in the mumble, but kind of went away now. It kind of went away now. Uh, do you know who it was from? Uh, Bushy Quip. Oh uh, well, he just uh, posted a huge one here. Um, got another Bluetooth question. Uh, he's he's the guy with the uh, rocket fish USB dongle, and I'm trying to put uh, I'm trying to pair my Wii mote to my PC, but I'm using a third party Wii mote that doesn't seem to keep the device discoverable long enough for my computer to detect it. The drivers that auto installed were the generic Windows Bluetooth drivers. I tried installing the Broadcom drivers linked from the rocket fish site, but it told me <clears throat> my drivers were already up to date. Someone recommended that I try the Toshiba BT stack, but the installer didn't recognize the device. What would you guys recommend for I do? Okay, mm. there's a problem with the mode. Only some stakes work. Some Bluetooth dongles work with it. Not all of them. No, all of them. Yeah, it's... it's yeah, go mm. to the Dolphin homepage, I think, or... 
Uh, one motion enjoy the driver for the PS3 controller actually has a, quite a nice list for dongles that work with the remote and the PS3 controller. I got one of those and well, was like five bucks and it works perfectly. So it's it's rocket fish again causing the problem. Possibly, yeah. Fucking rocket fish. Yeah, yeah there has to be a certain combination of dongle, stack, and software. Fuck your yeah, dongle. What, what what's wrong with my dongles? Fuck your dongle. Oh, I don't. Oh, but I like my dongle. But I like I like my dongle. It was. Oh. We're twelve. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, let's, let's move on to a let's move on to another question. Uh, while this isn't exactly a tech question, I was hoping for some advice, says uh, Templarian. Uh, I will be entering a computer science major this summer, uh, and as since I work on top of uh, since I work on top of school, I was wondering what would be the best thing to get a head start with. I'll have the entire spring to try to get a little jump start. Any particular books or subjects I should focus on, or just some general advice? Thank you. Yes. Uh, what is your yes. well? Let me, let, let me ask you this: What is you're going to be a computer science major? What does your school teach as the intro course are you teaching uh, do, are they teaching c++ are they teaching java do they teach a higher level language do they teach uh, c sharp do they teach something else what what's the intro course and then sit down and learn that language um or i would learn hexadecimal i would learn binary uh, get a head start on that as well um because i guarantee you your intro to compute comp sci course Will will beleaguer you with counting in binary and counting in hex because somehow, some way, that matters in this modern computing age. <laughs> well, it kind of matters if if you want to understand. Yeah, it's that, that's true. I mean, if you are gonna, if, and let's be honest, if you're gonna get into something like kernel programming, uh, any any type of low level programming, you're gonna need to know that. Um, oh, but if you want to know why your floating point numbers don't exactly work, don't aren't exactly floating point <laughs> numbers, you know, you, you probably want to understand that. Um, because doing floating point in a binary system means guessing. I had fucked up. <laughs> yeah, basically it means guessing. It is basically what it comes down to. So, um, branch predictions. So 0 0.5 can be represented perfectly. 1.5, on the other hand, cannot. No, it's fucking weird, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange. It's so strange to think that 1.5 is not 1.5 on a computer. It's like, sometimes it's 1.5, but sometimes it's 1.5191519, and other times it's 1.49. Like, what? <laughs> All right, that's cool, whatever. Um, yeah, but no, get get the math down. Yeah, get the math down, I, I think the so. Calculus, the algebra, that's what most to, to, science makes. You know, to be, fair, decimal point, to be fair, decimal points in the real mathematical world aren't exactly the same decimal points either, so... Our world. We live in a strange fucking universe, don't we? It's fucking weird. Math helps us explain it. Yeah, math helps us explain it, except math isn't an absolute language either. <laughs> That's the worst part about it. Math has fuzzy boundaries. Does that, does that not blow your fucking mind? <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Uh, alrighty. Uh, JMP writes, Happy Holidays, Nash, Mark, Maluku, which is Mark, and Lordcat. My CPU fan has been acting weird once in a while. When I turn on my computer, the fan on my CPU makes a loud noise like it's having a heart attack. <laughs> it would then keep the loud noise until I turn off the computer. I keep turning it on and off until I get lucky and it's running normally. After cleaning the dust out of it, it still makes the noise. This custom PC is more than three years old and I believe it's time to replace it with a better fan. I use an a AMD... AMD Phenom 9950 64 4 quad core processor on an ECS Elite Group GF8 2200A motherboard. You guys know of any good fans that could work with my CPU and motherboard? You know what's happening is your stock fan is dying. And uh, you're, the only way you're getting lucky is because the, the ball bearing of the fan is, is reseating correctly and you're going to be fine. Um, you just need a new fan, man. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, I I would recommend maybe um, I don't know. Actually, yeah. Tom's Hardware has some interesting. Um, Tom's oh, Hardware has not some. Not some... overclocking. Um... I mean, if you're not overclocking, you really don't need a big thing like. Uh, for example, I got a really silent system here because I got two big fucking heat sinks with really big fans. You don't need something like that, but 
uh, God, what um oh man, what is what was the Zalman uh, CNP S five X? That's Charlie Nancy Paul Sam five Xerox Performa ninety two. That is a nineteen dollar um from Newegg. It's like it's a twenty dollar fan, and it's 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 slightly better than stock. What I'm using on mine, fairly quiet, pushes a good deal of air. Got heat pipes. It's it's yeah. That that's that's your that's that's got it for you right there. It works with uh, uh, it's it's natively will work with the AMD socket, yes, or it can be socket. converted with the uh to work with um, Intel. But yeah, it's that that's that's if you got an AMD, that's the no must no fuss connector standard replacement. Um, now it, you your 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 fan is a socket AM two so. Uh, Nash's suggestion is fantastic. Looking up on Newegg here, uh, there's a Logisys one that comes in at 25, another one that comes in at 17, there's an Arctic one that comes in at 15, a Cooler Master one that comes in at 11. Uh, so there, you have plenty of options here. Just check out Newegg, dude. Uh, I love Nash's suggestion, by the way. I, I, you know what? That's probably the easiest one to go with. But all you need is something that's going to connect to an AM2 Plus uh, socket. Uh, and there's a plenty of them out there. Just do a power search on Newegg. Uh, go to uh, Shop All, All Stores, Computer Hardware, uh, and then Fans and Heat Sinks. You can click on the Power button, the, the Power link. It's a small link up there. And then select all the ones with Socket AM2 Plus. And, uh, you'll be, and there's a ton of them. Uh, and, oh, and Socket AM2 Plus. Also look for ones that are Socket AM3 because same socket. Same socket, AM3 as well. Um, and you, you'll find something to, re to replace it. And it'll probably run cooler than stock. Um, and now I need to go back and to the thread because I'm stupid and went to Newegg.com there. Uh, actually, you know what? It's been 45 minutes. I think it's time to take another break here. Hour number five, wrapping up in the How to Do It Marathon with Nash and Mark. I need to get some something to drink, too. I'm like, my throat is just dying here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty, uh, that's it for hour, uh, hour five, hour six coming up next. Live at LordCat.com, Live365.com, uh, Radio Dead Air. Uh, how many people listening on the, uh, on the uh, radio stream? Uh, let me see. We had about 10 or so earlier. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, we've got about 10 right now. All right, cool. All 10 of you listen on Live 365, all, uh, all 330 of you on the uh, live stream. Uh, thank you so much for listening in and tuning in, and we will be back with our six in a few minutes. Uh, need to take a little bit of a break, guys. I mean, it's just you can't do this in the continuously, but uh, we'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, day. Okay, and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go get something to drink. Oh. Hmm. But you can repair like a fan. Yeah, but it's not really worth it considering the I price have. of one. I mean, it's it's you can repair it, and, you know, until you can get a new one, but it's not really worth it in the long run. It's a good temporary thing, I guess. It's kind of fun to see how it works. I have a question for you on the mumble. What? From um, Seaball. Um, had a new on new show going that got the glass went over really well. Yeah, it's, it's going fine. I'm going to continue it next month. I haven't watched it. I'm sorry. That's okay. I want to though. I just I need to. I've got to get the Magfest script done before the end of tomorrow and then I'm doing a new what the fuck is wrong with you for New Year's and then we're going to MAGFest and I'm busy 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 as a motherfucker that's a new expression I haven't heard before but okay busy as a motherfucker yes oh, I use that one all the time I am busy okay. as a motherfucker because <laughs> you have to think a motherfucker he's a busy guy a lot of moms need to be fucked a whole lot of moms need to be fucked that's a full-time job right there. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to keep your mom happy. Just saying. 
I know, I'm a horrible man. Yes, That's well. okay. I've learned to live with it. Yeah, hunger is a motherfucker. That's another one too. Motherfucking, that's all. That takes a lot of energy. Good for burning calories. Just saying. 